Mike's Daily Podcast. Thank you, Anki. Yes, welcome to my podcast. It's called Mike's Daily Podcast. That's the name of this program, and it's Mike Matthews. And I say, yeah, I am going to eat some green eggs and ham. If I can get a hold of some green eggs, apparently that eggs means eggs means. Apparently, eggs are going to go up in price because of some kind of. Uh, thing. That's what I heard. Mike's Daily Podcast. That's crazy, huh? Hey, it's episode 2411. Mike's 2411. Daily. I should have broadcasted. Podcast. Podcasted to you yesterday. Yeah. I got interrupted. But hey, today a, a podcast for you. Ah, I went for a nice walk today in the town of Pleasanton. We're broadcasting from Podcaster Valleyton today. Did you see the last podcast picture? It featured my lovely lady friend and I sitting at the wonderful Tomoka River Grill in, near uh, Daytona Beach. And it was such a beautiful day. Well, no, it was a terrible day. <laughs> With the part, the part, most of the day was bad because, well... My mom had passed away a couple days previous, and we had to take care of a bunch of stuff. We had to get to Florida, take care of stuff physically there. By the way, as someone who has gone through this now, if you have a parent or a relative that you are then the personal representative for, as I am with my mom... There is so much you can do online. In many ways, you don't even have to physically be there. The only reason why I needed to be there, and some stuff was much easier to do in person, of course, but getting all of the old photographs was the main thing, and getting my mom's... And here's today's podcast picture. My mom's paintings, and I, I would post a podcast picture of one of my mom's paintings... Oh, but I don't, I I really don't think that's appropriate. A, because my mom liked to paint about controversial things most of the time. B, it's my mom's personal property and I'm not going to post it online. I'm just not. Someday, someday maybe I'll, I'll post a picture of one of them. But it's really a personal thing, so I'm not going to do that. But the late great Basil the Boxer. Oh, now that would have been awesome if mom had done a painting about Basil, but she did not paint any pets. Her animal that she liked to paint was the uh, pelican. She loved pelicans. That's why she moved to Florida. So what I'm saying is, let's say you have a parent... Or a relative who decides to move far away To the other side of the country And God forbid something happens to them And you have to take care of their estate There is so much you can do online And I want to tell that to you As someone who is not an expert in finances I'm The only thing I'm an expert in is Nothing <laughs> I am telling you now, though, I feel like an expert in this topic, and that is you can do so much online. Now, the personal effects, the real close. I mean, I really had to physically be there and be in my mom's house and take care of things and talk to her neighbors, talk to people that knew her and and just get a sense of the, the area that she was in, the space she was in. Close to the time in which she passed There was so much Knowledge that I I could only get If I was physically there Now The picture The podcast picture from yesterday Which you can see at MikeSillyPodcast.com Was during that time And we took a break From all the hard work we were doing And it was a difficult day And we ate at this Fun little restaurant Right on the Tomoka River you can see that at MikeStillyPodcast.com And today Today's podcast picture is actually a picture from today The podcast picture from yesterday was from Sometime in mid-February But this p- podcast picture for today For episode 2411-2411 Is from 
Pleasanton and my walk today. I was supposed to be somewhere at eight o'clock this morning, and then I get there and found out I didn't have to be there till two. But I was already in Pleasanton, so I said, "All right," and I went for a walk. And this is a nice picture from the walk. See it at mikesdailypodcast.com And also you can hear me on the radio tomorrow Playing a fun, fun mix of awesome music from the 70s, 80s, and 90s A wonderful, upbeat, dance, energetic, happy, woohoo music mix And you can hear it There's a link at mikesdailypodcast.com Tomorrow 9am to 4pm Pacific Time And see that link at mikesdailypodcast.com So There is a guy Named Peter Peter uh, Dr. I can't Now I've lost his name Anyway he's a doctor who's the anti-vaxxer And I looked him up and I got this article from dailytelegraph.com. It says ivermectin, the anti-parasitic drug popularized as a treatment for COVID-19 by podcast host Joe Rogan. Oh, that's what I am. I'm an expert in podcasting. So I'll steal that from Joe Rogan. I am a podcast host too. But ivermectin is useless against the disease A major new study has found against COVID-19 Researchers with the TOGETHER study A worldwide project involving a series of clinical trials Designed to test the effectiveness of several repurposed drugs to treat COVID-19 Conducted a double-blind, randomized, placebo-controlled trial Involving 3,515 patients At clinics in Brazil Patients who had symptoms For up to seven days And at least one risk factor Were randomly assigned to receive Ivermectin or placebo 679 people in each group 2,157 received another intervention Those who received Ivermectin Were given a dosage of 400 micrograms Per kilogram of body weight Once daily for three days Treatment with ivermectin did not result in a lower incident uh, incidence of medical admission to a hospital due to progression of COVID-19 or of prolonged emergency department observation among outpatients with an early diagnosis of COVID-19. As we go outside a cafe, a anyway, a somewhere in Podcastro Valley, a ten, the last place on earth. The TOGETHER researchers noted that evidence supporting the role of ivermectin for treatment of COVID-19 was inconsistent. At least three meta-analysis of ivermectin trials have strongly indicated a treatment benefit and others have concluded that there was no benefit. Although the number of included trials involving outpatients varies among the meta-analysis, the overall number of events that occurred in our trial is larger than the number of all the combined events in these meta-analysis. The result of this trial will therefore reduce the effect size of the meta-analysis that have indicated any benefits. The co-author Craig Rayner from the drug development company Sertara said the TOGETHER trial had comprehensively analyzed ivermectin for any potential benefit. We found that the treatment with ivermectin did not reduce the need for medical admissions to hospitals, hospital settings for COVID-19 patients. We examined it from multiple angles, multiple subgroup analysis, and ultimately there is no suggestion of important clinical efficacy from ivermectin on COVID-19. There is a Last month, billionaire Clive Palmer said he likely would have died without a cocktail of antiviral drugs, including ivermectin and hydroxychloroquine after catching COVID-19 in February. 
Mr. Palmer, who is unvaccinated, contracted the more deadly Delta variant in Sydney and was rushed to Pindara Hospital February 27th. And then in 2015, half of that year's Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine was awarded jointly to Ivermectin's discoverers. Satoshi Omura of Kitasato University and William Campbell of Merck. The medication is sold in both humans and animal formulations. For humans, it exists in tablet form and has been widely used in Africa to treat intestinal strongliodiasis diasis and onchocerciasis. Also known as river blindness Which are caused by parasitic worms In August last year The US Food and Drug Administration Told Americans to stop taking the drug By referencing The veterinarian version When the medication is taken As intended it is low risk However when taken in large doses It can cause serious side effects Including severe nausea and vomiting And neurological effects Such as dizziness, seizures and coma The FDA said it had seen a rise in reports of patients being hospitalized after self-medicating with ivermectin. If you are not a horse, if you are not a cow, seriously, y'all, stop it, the FDA tweeted. This from the uh, uh, Daily Telegraph. Dr. Peter McCulloch... A cardiologist who had criticized COVID-19 vaccines and promoted alternative treatments, including ivermectin, said the TOGETHER trial was too small and underpowered and that three days was too short. He said, standard of care practice now at 600 micrograms for longer duration with four to six additional drugs. Ivermectin first began to be touted as a therapeutic for COVID-19 in early 2020 after scientists in Melbourne found it could inhibit SARS-CoV-2 in the lab in high doses. It then began to get popular as a treatment among some doctors and the likes of Joe Rogan who attributed his rapid recovery after catching the virus to a cocktail of medicines. Medications, including ivermectin, even as health authorities and the drugs manufacturer Merck warn against its use, citing lack of evidence. It looks like the winner here is Merck. In all of it. And isn't that Big Pharma? Big Pharma's Merck. So here are all these people touting these anti vaxxers touting Merck, basically, touting Big Pharma. Interesting how that all goes, huh? Sodium, meanwhile, is an electrolyte that's essential for a wide range of body functions. Yes, salt. Hypnaturemia is a common condition that causes sodium levels in the blood to be lower than normal. And a new study has found that more people become hospitalized due to hypnaturemia in temperatures above 15 degrees Celsius. Now, if I do the <laughs> uh, ma- uh, the math and do the conversion from Celsius to Fahrenheit, let's see, that would be 59, a little less than 60 degrees. So a new study found that more people become hospitalized when it's under 60 degrees Fahrenheit with climate change expected to increase temperatures across the world. The study predicts that an increase of 2 degrees Celsius could increase cases of hypnotremia by 13.9%. We need sodium for various body functions, although I would argue that we get too much sodium in our diets as it is. Especially if you eat fast food There's so much salt and all of that Or if you eat a lot of stuff that comes out of a can A lot of that's salted Heavily salted We just don't need the salt That much But The human body needs sodium for various body uh, Functions from conducting nerve impulses To regulating heart rate Digestion, brain activity And blood pressure 
Hypnotremia is a common electrolyte disorder characterized by low levels of sodium. The condition is seen in up to 30% of all hospitalized patients. 30%. A person with mild hypnotremia may have no symptoms, but if sodium levels drop too low or too fast, symptoms might include difficulty concentrating, headaches, nausea, and more severe cases, symptoms can include confusion, seizures, and coma. Having diarrhea, vomiting, sweating, or having underlying heart or liver disease and kidney failure can cause hypnotremia. And it's hyponatremia, sorry. Seasonal changes in temperatures have also been linked to an increase in the prevalence of hyponatremia in patients attending the emergency department in summer months. In a recent study, researchers at the Karolinska Institute quantified the effect of outdoor temperature on the risk of hospitalization with hypnotremia. And in a uh, hyponatremia, a retrospective study published in the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism included the entire Swedish population over 18 years of age The researchers used data From the National Patient Register To study the incident rates Of hyponatremia At a given outdoor temperature In increments of 1 degree Celsius The researchers retrieved data On the 24 hour mean temperature of the day When each patient was admitted to hospital On the hottest days, women and those over 80 were at the highest risk. Those over 90 were 15 times more likely to be hospitalized due to hyponatremia compared to cooler days. The study estimates that an average increase in temperature of 1 degree Celsius will lead to a 6.3% in the incidence of hospitalizations due to hyponatremia. An increase of 2 degrees, according to projections, would result in a 13.9% Increase that according to medicalnewstoday.com. So just be aware if you're getting hyponatremia, let's see that a condition where sodium levels in the blood are abnormally low, causing nausea, vomiting, fatigue, headache, or confusion. Urgent medical attention is usually recommended by healthcare providers. It can be dangerous or life-threatening if untreated. It is very common, more than 200,000 cases per year in the U.S., and it is treatable by a medical professional. Requires lab tests or imaging, and can last for several days or weeks. So there, I hope you learned something, because I certainly did. With this show Today With these fascinating articles Excellent So we're outside a cafe anyway Somewhere in Podcaster Valley Tin the last place on earth Look who's here Oh my god This is jolly Too hard gift stuff supervisor And instead of You know gloves I have salt gloves Salt gloves? Yeah my grand is Instead of having Snow in it It's got salt Oh That could cause Hyponatremia and, and, or wait If you do have hyponatremia Maybe you're supposed to drink The snow globe water Don't do that Mike Matthews Yeah probably not a good idea Look who else is here Hello Mike this is Floyd the floor man And this is John Deere the engineer Yes Mike it's fascinating What you talked about today With that word that you learned Yeah and that word was Hyponatremia Wow, that was really good, Mike Matthews. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I just want to say, I want to thank you for listening to the podcast. What I do also want to say is, uh, if you do exist, if you actually are a person, thank you for being a person. I hope you never get hyponatremia. And I hope you get something from this podcast to try and bring you stuff that's interesting, informative, helpful in some way in this world. It is a daily podcast, but I do occasionally get interrupted. Uh, my mom did pass away 
uh, a little over a month ago. I think we're almost at a month and a half now. And just so you know, there are probably other podcast hosts that get a gazillion like sympathy sympathy emails or maybe sympathy comments posted to their social media or maybe people even call the number. I have a phone number that I always talk about with this show uh, that I'll give in a second. But yeah, nothing. Absolutely nothing. I had one person who I'm actually friends with. So he had my personal text number. He texted me. We, we met up. It was good to see him. But that's it. Nothing. Nothing. Just to see a little inside my world. This podcast is really listened to by absolutely no one. However, I see, according to the statistics, and this podcast is heard on multiple platforms. So if I ever get deplatformed by YouTube or anybody, I'm instantly back up somewhere else. But I'm a, I'm a, what do you call it? A whack a mole. I'm going to pop. I'm, a, I'm not a mole. Like I'm not inside an organization getting information and secretly passing along to a, you know, a government or something. And I don't understand the whole thing where I was just, I went on a tangent there. I was thinking about Russia again and about how, why, why are all these Republican talk show hosts so pro-Russia, so pro-Putin? I don't get that. Nobody's explained that to me yet. Why the connection? Anyway, cafe anyway. But it is true. It is there. There's this one guy. He hosts a national show. He's actually a lawyer who represented Trump. And he was saying, oh yeah, there's no way Ukraine is going to win. Russia is just going to take over Ukraine. He said that at the very beginning. Even people on who were guests on his show that were also Republicans... Contradicted him Argued with him Told him he was wrong Don't underestimate Ukraine By the way Why are you Underestimating Ukraine Don't you want to be Pro-Ukraine And and Anti A government That's being hostile To another A a democratic government Why why are you Like uh, You have a despot Going after Ukraine Why Why are you pro The despot This guy was just like, oh, they're not going to. And now he is eating crow. Now he's eating. He's this foot is so far into his mouth. And this is all like ridiculous. Why did he say that? it, It baffles me. Just baffles. So. And I'm also baffled why nobody. I mean, my mom is no longer with me. She's gone. And she's. It, it, is, it was very painful Very sad And I got nothing 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 from my podcast listeners So you know As a podcast host I'm going to tell you There are probably other podcast hosts That get nothing back from their listeners Maybe I got no listeners And that's fine I'm fine with that too So At any rate Just telling you that My podcast listeners are as quiet As the background noise On my podcast right now Wait I still hear a couple of birds Maybe right now Now? Right now Okay So there you go Mike Matthews The podcaster with absolutely no listeners But he still does his podcast daily So you can tell me what you think 336MM daily That's 3 plus 3 equals 6 Because I know math Kinda MM as in Mike Matthews Because that's my name And there's math in my name Which is ironic And daily, as in what this podcast is sometimes getting interrupted, but you can call that number and leave a message. Would love to hear from you. Don't forget my radio show tomorrow. And thank you for listening, even though you don't say a dang thing. Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now. Mike's Daily Podcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.